What is the future of writing? The book? The book? Theory? Theory? Is it possible to imagine a future without print? Or ink? Or paper? Or paper? What strategies can we undertake to reimagine writing, thinking, and learning in the digital epoch? It would be a tedious talk to form such a system of rules for this new method of writing, or to give a description at large of my device. One example might fully explain the whole, to offer others the faculties to understand the design. In his 1988 article, Handbook for a Theory Hobby, published in Visible Language, Gregory L. Almer proposes a model for participants to reconsider and invent alternatives to print-centered thinking and writing. In this section of his manual, Almer provides a scheme for those who wish to do theory as hobby without becoming professional experts. Theory, writing, for amateurs. I read on a screen an essay that first appeared here in print. But suddenly I'm no longer thinking of Almer. My imagination cast away on an island, floating or flying as it is, where Gulliver and I meet another set of professors and projectors engaged in speculative learning. One professor's experiment allows the most ignorant person at a reasonable charge and with little bodily labor to write books without the least assistance from genius or study. I hear the engine of the universal artist disrupt the position of words. I watch the professor's planned improvement of language leading to the deleting of verbs and participles and finally abolishing all words whatsoever. I follow the dean and I trace the line of projectors to Ulmer and adopt this pseudonym, avatar, username, handle for myself, projector period. How should this installment be read, interpreted, projector period, studying the masters, the models, the modes, the schemes, the gimmicks, the hoaxes, the mythologies, project or period, mocking the old publisher parish mantra or sustaining it. The following is a the montage, following is a past, montage recording, past recording, past recording, past never, intended never intended for publication, for publication let alone this publication. This publication. This they are clips from past clips lectures, from past lectures, lectures conference, past papers, papers, conference papers, group seminars, group group seminars group personal memos, personal memos, personal memos. Overlaid with video, overlaid with video, overlaid paper making demonstration, making demonstration. The work intends to reimagine re alternative future history for writing practice, for writing practice, for writing practice. It attempts to negotiate the features associated with orality, orality, manuscript, manuscript, an electronic mode, electronic mode, electronic mode, haunted by both the powers of print, powers of print, and the rotting, the rag, rotting, the rag. Here, here, the projector finds a hobby. A hobby. Seeing all these questions emerging on paper, I have the impression that I have never had any other subject. Basically paper, paper, paper. It could be demonstrated with supporting documentation, quotations, on paper.
So we cannot say that there is no authorial eye, either within or behind the satire. And authors. And their individual, collaborative, and sometimes combative activities. These activities cover the entire publishing process, from the writing, collection, and editorial process of materials, to the visual design and composition, textual and paratextual materials, to the distribution of these plans and productions. In those moments before or along language and knowing, I leaned in, listened to the strangest of words, hybrid or nonsense phrases that meant nothing at all and yet made a sense between us. I can't remember a single one, tentative and ephemeral sounds, sayings, inadequate to any form of memory. In Massachusetts, a printer advertised that his linen rag paper was obtained from the linens of ancient Egyptian mummies that had been purchased for their rag content only. Well, everybody has their own style. Well, I think everybody wants to put their, their own stamp on it. Stretch, 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 a pause, pause. a conversation. Mais il est vrai que les gestes de, de type déconstructif ont souvent l'apparence de gestes de, de, qui vont déstabiliser ou inquiéter ou angoisser les autres ou euh, blesser même quelquefois. Alors, chaque fois que j'ai euh, fait ce geste-là, if you look at electricity uh, from the point of literacy, it gives the matrix. The pearl, I want a third pill. I want a third pill. The methodology is that we have to invent. Someone has to invent, just as Plato did, Aristotle, and so forth. Uh, you know, the classical Greeks invented literacy. It didn't just happen. Then, like they went by the river and found literacy. You see, it doesn't like much God matter what you say on the telephone. No, they invented it. The telephone as a service is a huge these other environment. Were, were excluded because that this is the way literacy works. It analyzes well, the environment, affects everything. It separates things out. Work over here, play over there. In the same with radio or any other. What is not dead? Electricity compared to the effect of electricity is holistic. The printed word sets up a paradigm, a structure of awareness which affects everybody in very, very drastic ways. Whatever and happens it in doesn't Derrida, very much matter what you print as long as you go on in that form he of activity. Need, he well, need the book else. is not dead. And as Derrida reminds us, quote, the page remains a screen. The norms and the of paper, its strategic more role in the dissemination of ideas, nonetheless, made it essential in the His focus on Eddie's and stabilized the plot structure. Anderson is the first to be further to interrogate the way in which Brown outrages the way in which he supports the language of new models, specifically in the way in which writing, print, development, and publishing only further complicates the book. Do we want to?